Daryl, we've been doing this for a hell of a long time. Very long time. Over 20 years ago, I had the uh, honor and pleasure of sampling one of your earlier designs, the original Renegade biplane, even before the Renegade Spirit, little Rotax 503 that was about as sweet an airplane as I've ever flown and still is on my 10 best list 20 some odd years later. You've done a number of airplanes since and now you're ready to do it all again. Let's talk a little bit first about uh, the big monster here. You've, uh, you've done an amazing uh, radial engine aircraft, uh, ultimate boonie basher, kind of a mini beaver. If you would talk about that for a moment. Well, it was uh, designed eight or nine years ago, and originally it was supposed to be what this airplane actually is. Um, but when we started designing it, more and more people were wanting more and more power and uh, bigger engines, and uh, so we kept making it bigger and adding more weight to it, and it became the Moose, as you know, and we've sold uh, well over 300 of them. But now that fuel is getting more expensive and there's a lot of people wanting uh, tricycle gear, which this one can be, uh, we decided to go ahead and build a slightly smaller, uh, less horsepower aircraft. A little, little less expensive to build as well. Well, this is the Yukon. This is your newest design. Tell us what is the Yukon and what does it offer the flying public? Well, it's a 2,550 pound aircraft. This particular one has a 390 like homing in it, uh, 210 horsepower. Uh, constant speed prop. It's quite large as you can see. It comes in either tricycle or tail dragger configuration. It has, uses the same airfoil as all my airplanes. It has a lot of wing area. Should be uh, very easy to fly by anybody that can uh, has just recently acquired a license, say on a 172 or 150. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Will this also uh, be available through the accelerated uh, building programs that you have as far as the quick build kits? Yes, we are, gonna, uh, we are planning to make this a quick build as well. What kind of performance numbers are we looking at with various engines? Well, with the, uh, the engine that we have right here, we're expecting 135 mile an hour cruise. Okay, okay uh, because we have a very low wing area. This airplane, a good way to describe its performance is going to be almost the same as an Elite. Uh, it's, we're trying to get about the same performance as an Elite aircraft with 180 horse. What kind of payload and takeoff and landing requirements can we expect from a Yukon? Well, it, uh, my target uh, design weight for this was under 1,400 pounds, and uh, what you see right now weighs 1,127, and I've worked it out that I'm going to come in at 1,385 pounds on this airplane. Excellent. Fully painted, upholstered, upholst uh, instruments and everything. So at 2,550 pounds, we're going to end up with 1,150 pounds useful load which means there's, you know, four of us bigger guys can go in the airplane and still have reasonable fuel, plus a little bit of stuff in the back. Who do you think is the perfect builder buyer for a Yukon right now? Well, we've tried to design the airplane so that anybody can build it, even a first time builder. Okay. It's a relatively simple, it doesn't require any jigs. Uh, all you require is the space and a flat table. And uh, there's very little fabrication to do. It's mostly an assembly job. Um, and we have tried to design the manual in such a way that you start with the easy things and you work your way up to the more difficult things. So I think anybody that wants to build his own airplane, it would work well, or somebody that wants a quick build, wants to get in the air a little quicker, it, it works well for them as well. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. 
What can the market expect to pay to build a good, solid, basic airplane? What's the range for a Yukon these days? I would expect that with a brand new 390 with console speed prop, uh, the average person is going to have somewhere around nineteen ninety-five thousand dollars into this airplane, not as a quick build, but as a mm -hmm. uh, as a kit build. Uh, quick build is going to add probably another twenty-five thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars to that. What's a quick build going to do for the overall completion time on one of these aircraft? Reduce it by fifty percent. Uh, I would expect that it would reduce your build time down to less than 1,500 hours. Well, for a rough and ready four place, that's not a bad deal at all. I have noticed that you've stayed with the rugged airplanes, the airplanes that people can fly out of just about anywhere and at the same time have plenty of room inside for those of us who've never met a quarter pounder we could refuse. Um, is, is this going to be pretty much your legacy to the business? Uh, good, solid, rug, rugged airplanes that just about you can stick everybody into? Yeah, I think so. It's in the area of the country where we live, it's, uh, there's a lot of wilderness, and uh, this is the type of airplane you can take into a wilderness, so logging roads, that type of thing. Um, all our airplanes have always been that way, and they probably always will be. Uh, we have no need to go really fast. Uh, floats. We live in an area with uh, tremendous uh, float potential, you know, lots of lakes and rivers and, of course, the ocean. Uh, and floats are a large part of our business. So uh, I think pretty well that's the way it'll be until the end of the business. <laughs>